Well, hey everybody, and welcome back to the online worship service here at Park Ridge Presbyterian Church. My name is Amanda, I'm one of the pastors here at the church, and I'm excited to welcome you to this online service. We love our online service and the chance that it gives us to connect to God wherever we are and to connect to the messages and worship of our church wherever we might be. And we're glad that you're here today worshiping with us. If you are new or newer, if you're still trying to get connected to our church, we would love to help you do that. The easiest thing to do is to go to the website parkridgepresby.org slash get connected. And there's a few next steps that you can take here. Filling out the I'm new here form is the best way to do that because that tells us a little bit about who you are and what you're looking for and someone from our team will follow up with you in the coming days. We have a new message series that starts today. It's called Your New Playlist. And this message series is inspired by a book by John Acuff and his daughters called Your New Playlist. And this message series is designed to help you think differently about yourself so that you can maybe think about yourself more the way that God thinks about you. We're gonna have copies of this book on sale at the church. You can pick yours up during the week from the church office or pick it up on a Sunday. And maybe this book will be an inspiration for you as you start this new year and this journey with us here at PRPC. So today's service is gonna kick off that message series. We'll have some time for worship led by our band and we'll have a time of prayer. We are glad that you are here, that you are looking for God and trying to connect to God today. Let's worship God together. dead now I'm living forever I had failed but you were my redeemer often blessed beyond no measure I was lost now I'm found by the father I've been changed from a room and a treasure I've been given a hope and a future
So we're starting a three-week series or a three-part series called Your New Playlist. And to be full disclosure, this is a title that is ripped from the pages of a book that is going to help us as we explore a very important thing. Now, it's so helpful that we're going to walk our way through this because the problem it addresses and how it addresses is a real issue for so many people. And the problem that we're going to look at is the problem of overthinking. Now, before any of you say anything, I know what you're thinking a little bit, that overthinking cannot be that big of an issue for some people. And there is a kind of overthinking that is not that big of a deal, which is that kind of paralysis by analysis overthinking, where you just need a kind person to say, just make a choice, just pick something to eat, right? Or change your shirt or whatever it is. But that's not the kind of overthinking that is a problem for us. There's a kind of overthinking that is really bad for us and really unhelpful for us and for other people. And that kind of overthinking we need to reduce and avoid. And that kind of overthinking is the one where you are repeating thoughts about yourself that keeps you from being who God wants you to be. When you keep thinking negative thoughts about yourself or about your future, and you keep repeating them over and over in a way that keeps you from being who God wants you to be, that's a really damaging kind of overthinking. And we all do this. And there's another kind of overthinking where you're repeating thoughts about someone else that keeps you from seeing them how God sees them. When we repeat thoughts about other people in this way, it does not do good things for them as we see them. And if you're a parent, a coach, a mentor, a person of influence, you can actually hurt people by repeating things about them that aren't true. Now, we have to get our heads around how we're going to do this, how we're going to work on overcoming our overthinking. And one of the ways that we're going to do that is by looking at this book, Your New Playlist. Now, Your New Playlist, we're going to look at because it was written by two teenagers and four teenagers. Admittedly, they had help because their dad's an author. But this book has practical insights that are super important for our teenagers and for all people in order to help them overcome these negative thoughts, these overthinking. Now, the reason we're looking at that is because their dad wrote this book by John Acuff, Soundtracks. And really, it's a good book. But the reality is that kids aren't going to ever touch something like this, but they might look at something that a teenager wrote. And so we're going to look at that all together. I will tell you that at the same time, our teenagers are going to be doing a study of your new playlist as well. Now, the other way that we're going to look at this and try to overcome our overthinking is by looking at some of the ancient wisdom that the Apostle Paul gives to us. Specifically, in the letter that he wrote to his friends and the people in the church in ancient Rome. Now, as you know, Rome was the capital of the Roman Empire, and it was the place where people were going to be taught what it meant to be Roman and to think like a Roman. And you've got to understand that that is a really powerful place to be. In particular, Paul was worried about the people because they were struggling to become more like Jesus. Because when you are in the place where you're going to be taught to think like a Roman, to walk like a Roman, to talk like a Roman, you're going to start thinking, talking, and walking like a Roman. In high contrast to what Paul was wanting to help people do, which is to think like Jesus, to walk like Jesus, to talk like Jesus. And when those powerful influences are in your life, they'll get you to do those things. And in particular, Paul noticed that there was a problem that the people that he was trying to help grow in their faith had, and it's a problem that we have today, which is they were doing things without even thinking. Or, in another way, they, weren't even, they were overthinking things as well. What Paul specifically wrote to them is this. He said, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. There were so many things that they had overthinking in their heads, on repeat in their heads, that they were just doing things like a Roman would and not doing things like a follower of Jesus would. So Paul is encouraging them and us as well to make sure that we are stopping those negative thoughts, stopping those powerful thoughts in our heads so that we don't fit in without even thinking, so that we can actually live like Jesus wants us to live and be the people who bring God's love into the world. Now, when we understand that this is a perennial problem where we have these powerful influences telling us how to think, what to wear, how to talk, how to walk, as it were, then we understand that we need to work hard to make sure that we combat those things when they hold us back. 
Remember, we're talking about what it means to be overthinking things when we are thinking negative thoughts that keep us from being who God wants us to be or thinking about other people in ways, in repetitive ways, that we don't see them as God sees them. Now, when we have a better understanding of how this all comes together, we can work our way through to break these overthinking habits. And as the eight cuffs put it, what we have to do is we have to break the soundtracks in our lives. The soundtracks are those thoughts that we keep thinking and we do without even thinking about them. And soundtracks, as they put it, are these repetitive thoughts that we keep telling ourselves without thinking. We all have these things. They just play in our heads over, over time, all the time. And they creep in without us even thinking about it. And then they get us to second guess everything in our lives. They get us to wonder if we're going to ever make it, or wonder if we're good enough, and all these kinds of things. And when we let those stay in our hearts and our minds about us, we won't speak the people God wants us to be. And we'll hold other people back at the same time. So when we understand that what we're trying to do is to break these soundtracks so that we can have the renewing of our minds, as Paul puts it, we have a better way forward. And as the Acuffs have put it together, there's a way to do this. And what they suggest is a really great way to do what Paul is teaching us, which is to renew our minds so that we don't fit in without even thinking. And they give it in this way. They say we want to re retire the old soundtracks, replace them with new ones, and repeat the new ones. Because we know that repetition is the mother of all knowledge. Now, when we retire the old soundtracks, when we stop believing those lies about ourselves and about others that aren't true, then we know which ones they need to be, and we need to let go of them. It's easier said than done, and we'll get to that in the next few weeks. The other side of this is that we can't just identify the ones that are holding us back. We have to do something to rep replace them with new ones. We have to reframe what is holding us back. We have to have a better understanding of how to really see how things are. And then we have to repeat the new ones so much that they become the new soundtracks in our lives, the new automatic thoughts. We got to make sure that they are elevated in our lives so that we don't lose speed again and have the old ones come back. And when we do all this, we can then put into practice exactly what God wants us to hear about ourselves and how God wants us to think of ourselves. Because if we are willing to stop the overthinking, if we're willing to let that automatic thinking in our brains be on pause, then we have a chance to then receive the new messages. To have those messages about who God thinks we are become foremost in our minds. Now, what happens then is then we have our minds renewed, which is what Paul was trying to help people understand. That's the other way that Paul was talking about it to his people, is that we want to be transformed in our minds so that we're renewed in God. So in particular, when we believe these things about ourselves that aren't true, when we believe other things about us and not how God sees us, we miss out on a better understanding of who we are. And when we let those corrupt ourselves, we are lost. But if we believe what God says about us, that we are beloved children of God, that we are worthy of God's love, that we're worthy of others' love, that we are worthy of relationship and community, we can understand exactly who God wants us to be. And remember that that's not just true about ourselves, but that's also true about how we see other people. It's really powerful how we see other people, and we want to see other people as God sees them. We don't want to have just negative thoughts about other people on repeat because we will continue to believe them. Rather, we want to have our minds renewed as we see other people, so we can see other people as God sees them. And when we do that, we have a better chance of loving them like God wants us to love them. Now, I hope you'll join us for future conversations and messages in this series, because it's super important for us to understand how critical this is for our lives, so that we can start seeing ourselves as God sees us, and we start seeing others as God sees them as well. Because when we do that, we're able to accept God's love better in our hearts and our minds. And when we do that, we can extend God's love better to the people in our lives. And that's why it's so important for us to make sure that we are not overthinking, that we are breaking those soundtracks in our lives so that we can believe what's true about us as God sees us and believe what's true about others as God sees them. 
And that's why it's important for us to do this together. Because this is hard, but important. So I hope you'll join us next week as we continue exploring what it means to have a better understanding of who we are in God's eyes and who others are in God's eyes. Let's pray. Loving God, will you help us feel your love today? Because some of us are full of doubts, full of worry, full of regret. Some of us just need to be reminded today that you love us just the way we are. Some days we're surrounded by more lies about who we are than the truth. So let your truth about us break through all that noise and give us a sense of your love and your grace. For those of us who are holding on to pain from the past, to hurtful words or disappointment from others or from ourselves, help us to find a way to release that weight and to give it over to you. As we begin this new year, help us to only bring with us what we need and to leave behind the rest. Fill us with your spirit of truth about who we are, about who you are, so that we can experience the fullness of this life you've given us. God, we ask that you would intervene for your people who are caught in places of despair and release them to new life. We pray release for those in the holds of addiction and depression, of selfishness and greed, of danger and disease. We pray for real transformation in the lives of those of us listening today, that we would see the evidence of your power in our lives and the hope that we have in Jesus. It's in the power of his name that we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us for our online service again this week. We really do hope that our time together has been a blessing to you. We do hope you'll join us again next week for our online service as we continue our message series, Your New Playlist. Please know that we're here to help you in any way we can, and we'd love to hear from you if there's a way we can help you. Well, again, please know that until next week when we join together again, we're praying for you, and we're here to help you in any way we can.